you got to keep it as simple as possible. So ultimately, it was just this iPhone. In this market, I knew that urgency would be a competitive advantage. So I had to learn to do it myself. YouTube for realtors. I don't know a single agent that has done it quite like the individual that I'm bringing on today. I'm bringing on Suman Kim, one of my partners, who has absolutely blown YouTube out of the water at a capacity that genuinely I don't think has ever been done before in the real estate industry. In his first year as a new solo agent, he closed 67 million dollars in production over 87 deals and in his second year he did over 114 deals and a dxp was the number one solo producer from youtube globally at the entire brokerage this is a guy that has been recognized as one of the top producers in all of austin as a new agent entirely free no prospecting no ad spend all using his iPhone from YouTube. So today, we're gonna to be breaking down Suman's entire process, the nuances that have allowed him to scale at an astronomical level, making over $2 million in GCI in his second year, again, as a new agent in a new market, and his entire content creation process, how he's created relationships with builders, and everything that you can do if you want to emulate his extraordinary success. Now, two quick things before we get started. Number one, I will link Suman's YouTube channel below because it is a blueprint of exactly what you can follow if you want to do over seven figures in your very first year as a new agent from YouTube. And the second thing is I will link his calendar info below if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one private Zoom call with Suman himself to talk about getting his help to scale your YouTube channel and help you become one of the top producers in your market. So without further ado, let's bring on the king of YouTube, Suman Kim. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to one of the most exciting and highly anticipated interviews in a long time. Um, you know, you guys have probably followed Suman's journey and have seen hopefully the past videos that we've done with him, but an individual that has done something that I've genuinely never seen before, number one producer globally at EXP from YouTube as an individual, you know, 87 deals in your first year, over 114 deals in your second year, entirely free, no prospecting, no ad spend. And and I think one of the most incredible things is somebody that has inspired so many people. So Suman, super excited to have you back on here, man. Mike, always, man. I can't, when I hear that, it's just, it reminds me of the journey that we've been on, man. That's been, that three years has flown by, but um, super grateful. Happy to be here, man. Yeah, man. It's, you know, it's like yesterday. I remember back December, 2020, you know, you looking at options and deciding that you wanted to commit to this and you wanted to do video and, and you went and did it at the highest level that I've ever seen. And I'm really excited to kind of unpack some of the things that we haven't discussed in the past videos. But, you know, I think for me, one of the most incredible and rewarding things has been how many people that I meet with the people, you know, 100 agents a month looking to partner with us that are all saying they were inspired by your journey. And I think the fact that you just continue to lead by example is is incredible. So, you know, before we start getting into the tactical, why don't you just unpack for people what that was like, you know, that journey from getting moving from California to Austin, new age, new city um, and building this massive legendary momentum even being featured on you know austin's top producer magazine covers and things like that yeah i think that um first of all i have you to thank mike i remember it's like a zoom call just like this you know i was so close to making the decision on a brokerage you know anyone knows yeah. that once you start passing your exam prep you pass your exam um you're gonna get spammed the heck out of every brokerage out there you know and when you're new you're actually kind of enjoying it you know like people are coming after you you interviewed them i interviewed over 10 to 12 different brokerages and I remember almost deciding on one and I came across you online and I thought, look, I don't, this guy's in a different country, but I feel like I need to talk to him, you know? And, and it was a zoom call like this. And I remember I was almost decided on another brokerage. It was a very traditional one, more local here. And it's what you said, it haunted me, you know, and even till this day, when I give my testimony on what my journey has been like professionally, I'm like, look, Mike said things that I already knew to be true he just said it out loud and it rang in me in such a way where i couldn't get out of my head and so before making the decision on which brokerage i remember just going look everyone else said the same thing you know everyone else said it. and the statistics show that 90 plus percent of new agents are failing anyways you know seventy thousand quit this year in the nation so i i knew these things so i'm like if everyone's telling me the same thing and 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 i come across this guy mike sherrard and he tells me something completely different based upon my situation which leads into my answer you know i i had to make a choice to work with you 
And ultimately, like, I feel like I carry the flag, Mike, as the worst case scenario, right? As, as someone that's brand new, has never sold a home before, um, has moving to a new area. Typically, your greatest attribute or asset that you have as a new agent is your sphere of influence, which I had none here, you know, no sphere of influence, no network. Um, but I do, in hindsight, believe that there's some attributes or some benefits to that. Like one thing I couldn't say to you, Mike, is I could never say, hey, I've always done it this way. Well, let yeah. me tell you how I did it in the late 90s. Or I'm, you know, I have a book of referrals today because I did it this way. And I couldn't say anything of that to you, right? I just yeah. had to be keep an open mind. And I think there's some benefits. So if you're new, there's some benefits to just be like, look, I'm willing to do something um, that makes sense. I'm willing to do something that's efficient, that's more modern. So I did, I, I essentially did exactly what you asked to, Mike. And I remember telling you, look, I'm just going to execute it the way you train to do it. I'll certainly add my own personality and my elements to it. Um, but ultimately, it made sense to me because prior to me moving to a brand new state and relocating my family, I watched YouTube all night long. You know, my wife and I would put our kids to bed and we'd sit there for four hours watching great videos and really crappy videos. You know, I remember at one point we're watching blurry videos of just someone driving through the streets. And it, it was a reminder of how much we desired information. We desired some sort of data. We desired some sort of like... Um, mystery to be resolved you know on what we're gonna do so when i decided to do real estate here and you mentioned youtube i'm like oh my gosh like that totally makes sense like i will be that person because i needed that person you know and so i'm gonna be that person that i need it so it's been crazy and it's it makes sense though obviously timing i benefited from from just what's happened in the last two or three years in the world um, but ultimately i'm just meeting people where they're at and they're mike they're in front of a computer and a phone all day long you know what i mean so why would I not meet them there? Why would I, you know, think about knocking on doors or cold calling them or sending a flyer in the mail? Like they're on their phone. I'm going to meet them there. 100% dude. And I think, you know, there's so many incredible things to unpack there, you know, especially as somebody that did, you know, upwards of a million GCI first year over 2 million second year that I think the two things that I really would like to dive into is your experience. Your, your experience based on consumer journey and looking at putting yourself in the consumer's shoes based on a relatable experience, obviously moving from California to Austin and, you know, tapping into that opportunity. I think the fact that you're not only meeting people where they're at, but you're relating to people who were just like you that went through the same type of, of situation. I think there's a lot of weight behind that. And also one of the things that you said, and I think there's a lot of importance behind this and I hope people catch it, which is that you were spending hours watching YouTube. And I think a lot of people will see you or, you know, some of the other agents that you've now helped crush with YouTube and just say, well, I want to do that. What do I have to do? But they're not a student of the game. And I think the fact that you you studied so much content yourself, you've seen what great content is, what terrible content is. And now you can position yourself to be above that. So do you want to kind of unpack the importance of actually immersing yourself into the platform and seeing, you know, being able to audit what are people expecting and how can I go the next level? Yeah. I, and I always tell people this, like I'm, I'm always an entrepreneur before I'm a real estate agent, you know, yeah. and, and having that mindset of being an entrepreneur is you're always looking for a solution uh, to which you might need yourself, you know? I remember becoming a parent for the first time and I remember starting to kind of envelop myself in the environment of baby stuff, right? We go in these stores in yeah. California, there's one called Bye Bye Baby, at, which is a huge friend. And I go in there and I realized half of the products in there are like independent mom and pop brands and just killed it, you know? And ultimately it's because these parents had a, a, a problem. They created their own solution. It worked for them. And then they went out and mass produced it themselves to create these brands. So. As an entrepreneur, it's the same thing. Like I needed content. I needed information. I needed someone that was already in Austin that was telling me how what life would be like and what to expect. I maybe even needed someone that wasn't a local. I needed someone that was on a journey that had already gone on that journey that I'm, I'm about to partake in. And so in that process, I, I consumed a lot of content. And I remember the type of content I would look for is just lifestyle content. Hey, what, what do we do with our kids? Like, are, is there parks? Yeah. Is there things to do? What's Mexican food like? You know, that was like, you know, something as, as trivial as that. And so I would consume this and I would consume this in, in, in large time slots, you know? And so that's why when I started doing it myself, I knew really quickly that first of all, I need to make an empathetic connection to the people watching because I know their heart 
it's fluttering. I know it's racing. I know one day they're so excited to make this massive transition in their life for their family. And then the next day they're freaking out, right? And that was us, you know, it's like, you're excited and scared to heck at the same time. And so knowing that being on YouTube and starting that, I said, look, before I go put out content, before I put out market reports, before I put all these data and statistics on times on market and inventory, I'm like, I'm just going to make an empathetic connection with the people look right in the camera and say, look, I'm probably already done what you're trying to do, you know, and here's my life. And here's, you know, I happen to be a father. I happen to be a husband. I happen to be one of many people that are going to try as have done this. And so I think it started with that. I think that we can't lose the fact that there is humans on the other side and that connection is key. That connection essentially allowed me to overcome my inability to show any experience or documented success in real estate. People chose me because they connected to me as a person and they bypassed the fact that, oh, let me see your credentials on how competent you are as a real estate agent. In fact, in the three years, Mike, I think two people have ever asked me that, you know, and I think that has to do with how you approach what you're putting out there and the type of content you're putting out there. So just to make it simple, I just, I made a connection to the people, you know? I think that's, that's so powerful. And, and, you know, just from knowing you, you're identically who you are on camera as you are in person, same tonality, same body language, same personality. And I think that gives people the, the, the feeling of trust and like right. that they could pour themselves into and be own, honest and vulnerable and, and very transparent because you're so relatable. And I love that you talk about that because, you know, one of my mentors at Mileto was talks about your imperfections are your greatest asset mm -hmm. and being able to relate to people. And I think even just touching on the fact that you've got kids touching the fact that you're new there, like all of these things are what relate you to so many people. Now, starting with your journey in YouTube, I think I'd love to kind of take it in the direction of how you identified your niche, but some of the things you did along the way, because one of the most genius things that I think you've done that I genuinely haven't seen anybody else do on YouTube is one of your first videos or the first video was that very honest video that you talked about, just looking into the camera saying, this is what I've done. If that's also you, feel free to hit me up. But one of the most incredible things that you did was a year later, you talked about it again, because I think a lot of people are saying, Hey, this is why I moved here. But when you move somewhere, it's still kind of based on theory, hopes and dreams. Mm -hmm. But then you went on to do a video of like a one year in review mm -hmm. of what it's actually been like, do you mm -hmm. want to kind of unpack what made that decision? And, you know, I, I think that's another great way to just go a layer deeper than most so that people could say, wow, he's actually now been here and this is the reality, not just the theory of what it's been like. Right, right. So the first part of the question, I'll answer this, Mike. I would say my niche did end up becoming home tours for model homes for builders and new yeah. construction. Now, people often reach out to me and say, Sue, but I don't have that much new construction in my area. How am I able to do this? I'm like, it doesn't matter what you end up doing. You, it matters that you're capturing the, your competitive advantages or the care their characters that to which people are going to be drawn to an area right so if you parachute me in any area mike like i'm just going to look around do a little bit of research and realize okay this is the attributes of this area it's a coastal area i'm going to talk more about you know homes that are proximity to the ocean maybe homes that are proximity that can be used for investment for vacation rentals if you drop me in an area where it's like farm and ranch i'm going to just talk about attributes of farm and ranch land Ultimately, I came to an area that's expanding greatly. So there's a lot of new construction. So I just happened to utilize that um, as an attribute here. I saw the advantages and I went for it. But it doesn't matter if it's new construction, if it's historical buildings, if it's um, older remodels in a gentrified area in a city, it doesn't matter if it's whatever. You're like You just got to take the attributes of your area and we're going to use video content and marketing to show that off. Um, but ultimately, yes, I did. I, I wanted to do a review video. A couple of reasons why I did that. Number one, is that I realized a lot of times when families are relocating, some of the best pragmatically, the, the, the fathers or the husbands tend to make the logical decisions. The emotional decision to give the green light is ultimately I've seen in my experience done from the wife, right? Once she gives the green light, they go for it, right? So the beauty of video marketing is that people are going to connect to you regardless, right? They're going to look at me and say, okay, I can choose to work with this guy because I don't mind the way he talks. He seems to be the same age and stage. I have some commonalities with them. I'm going to use them. They might find me and say, you know what? This guy's too young or this guy's too old or this guy doesn't look the way I, I feel comfortable or I want to work with someone else. And the beauty of video is that 
they're going to discriminate that by themselves. So by the time they reach you, you know, you're already ahead, you know? But one thing I realized is, look, I'm not, I'm not a wife. I'm not a mom, yeah. right? I'm not, I, I am who I am. So, but I realized how important that, that type of uh, perspective comes from a partner like that, you know? So I'm like, no, let me bring on my wife, you know, let, let me let her speak into um, some of these decision makers, you know, and maybe give her perspective because I don't have her perspective. She is primarily more with raising our children, why I might be gone out of having a professional career or whatnot. Um, and so I brought her on and said, let's just do a one year review. And I'll tell you this, Mike, that video, I would say besides just my first one and maybe a few homes, but that video is probably the most impactful. That's the video where most people say Suman, like that was the video that my wife saw and then she gave me the okay that we can move here, you know, and that to reach out to you. And so funny enough, like we're actually planning right now. I missed a two year, but I want to give a three year because I feel like, you know, yeah. obviously we've matured. We have a lot to share. Um, a lot has happened since we've been here, you know, and it's just, it's almost a follow-up. It's like a movie where you're like, Hey, I wonder what happened next. You know, Hey, you know, yeah. oceans 11, oceans 12, ocean 13, right? Not, you know, so, um, we are in the midst of that. And that was again, just emphasizing an extension of empathetic connecting with people. I can't connect with wives and mothers out there, but my wife can. So let me bring her on and let's see if she can, she can't, you know, uh, be a voice, um, for that perspective. 100% dude. I love that you did that. Because again, I've never seen anybody else do it. I'm sure now a lot of people are going to start doing it. Uh, but but it's such a genius idea in terms of relating on a different level to people that you genuinely just simply can't. So, you know, a lot of people are excited about the property tours. And I think there's a few things to unpack here about what you've done. I think tapping into the niche is important. And again, I see a lot of people as you alluded to, are saying, well, Mike and Suman, like, I don't have new construction. Well, you know, the number one producer in my market from YouTube, there is doing resale properties, property tours of resale properties. So I think, you know, removing excuses is the, is, is the forefront. But what was your journey like in terms of tapping into the new construction? Like, and what I'm referring to here is how did you start to get access to these properties? And then the next element of that is you've done really well with tapping into the time sensitivity of it. So let's maybe take people through the direction of how you've established the partnerships and got in and then how you were able to approach it in a way that gave you a competitive advantage. So ultimately, like, for most builders that choose to buy dirt and home sites in a particular growing or expanding community, they're going to be given a sales office. That sales office tends to be another, uh, uh, basically a, a designed heavy home that they're going to build and they're going to transfer transfers into a sales office. Eventually they'll sell it and they'll convert it back to a garage, but they have these everywhere. So think about, I mean, if you haven't seen them, just think about going car shopping. You know, you're going to see a bunch of cars and inventory cars on the lot. But the moment you walk into a showroom, they're probably going to have one that's like that that is like the AMG. That's the M version in there. And it's going to be probably have some like bolt ons and some exhaust on there. And it's going to have some different color wheels. And that's a, just a really high end, incredibly attractive and sexy version of other things they're selling. So if you're asking what gets more eyeballs, the homes or the cars that are on the lot or that car showroom car, that showroom car is going to get the eyeballs. And so ultimately, I saw that I saw it everywhere here in Austin, every builder had a showroom house in these communities. And so ultimately, look, one of two things that I knew, I knew one that they're trying to put their, their builder or their building and their product in the best light. And two, they really want to sell them. So they're mm -hmm. actually making something so appealing that it would sell the homes. And so it's public property and I'm only coming alongside you. And I'm looking at these sales counselors essentially saying, look, I'm here to help you. You're sitting in house waiting for an inbound call. You know, you're essentially just a, a, an employee salesperson. I'm a realtor. I want to create reach. I want to put this and broadcast this for you, you know? And so in the beginning, I'll, I'll be I'll be open and frank with everyone that's deciding to do this. The sales counselors aren't there to help you. They don't really care. You know, they're not necessarily there to be like, oh, let me be a resource to you. Let me, let me, if someone comes up unrepresented, let me just call you and maybe you can represent them. That doesn't exist. The moment they'll start liking you is when you start selling their homes, you know? So mm -hmm. people say, well, how'd you get in with them? I didn't get in with any of them. None of them helped me. I just actually bypassed them, you know, and did my own thing. You know, there's a quote that I kind of live by and it says, look, the world's going to get out of the way for the man that knows where he's going. Mm -hmm. So the moment I would come into here, I wouldn't say like, is it okay if I just pull this <laughs> down? And I, I'm like, hey, how are you? My name is Suman. Good to meet you. I'm a realtor here. I'm just going to go through and walk through and film this interior for some of my clientele. Love to help get you some business. 
take about 10, 15, 20 minutes and I'm out of here. And they're just like, all right, go for it. There's not this big ass. There's not this big conversation. There's not this big letterhead that I'm sending anyone. You know, it's a public property. They want to sell the homes. They want you to broadcast them. Now, I'm going to put a disclaimer and just say, look, it, it's up to you to understand all the bylaws of any community, any builder, what that looks like. But for myself, um, it's been a it's been a pretty fantastic journey where everyone got out of my way. I started selling their homes. I turned around and all of them became my greatest fans. Now, today yeah. I'm getting people like that aren't even in my area. Like, I'm not going to drive two hours to do this. They're like, Suman, I just opened a new model home. Will you please come out here and film this? You know, and that's a far cry from me asking permission at this point. Right. Yeah. They're like, hey, can, can I can you come out and film this? And now people are, are saying, Suman, will you please come out and film this? And so, uh, you know, it's 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 crazy how things turn and things turn when you give people business like straight up, you know. And so you got to do what you need to do to to penetrate and puncture and get that stuff broadcast in. And hopefully it does lead you to a place where you start getting results. I guarantee when you start getting results, they will become your best friends. And um, today I have builders paying me 5%, Mike. I have builders paying me 4%. I have some builders paying me 6%. Um, and they're out there and they are essentially collaborators with me. You know, I'll go even, I'm going to go take it one step further, Mike. I have builders that have taken homes away from their in-house sales counselor employees and given them to me to list. So yeah. I've taken homes away from the people that are supposed to sell them because they realize my reach is greater, my efforts greater, and the probability of me selling it will be greater than them just waiting for an inbound call in-house. And so that to me is a big shift in the market. Like that's a big shift to be like, and this has happened with two or three builders now. So I don't know if it's going to continue, but the fact that they did that was it spoke volumes, you know, hundred percent, man. And, and I, you know, to echo this, you know, I think people need to understand that this is not uncommon for people that lead with value. Like back in 2018, that's how I blew up my production was, you know, I found new communities. I went into the sales centers and it wasn't via YouTube, but it was Facebook ads. And I just said, listen, it's a new area. I'm willing to spend my own money. All I need is these photos. Please give me these and I'll run ads. And I ran ads $40 in two days, yeah. 40,000 commission, eight clients. And Crazy. after doing that, same thing as you. They said, wow, you're bringing more people than the sales center. You can list. And I listed their entire 200 unit condo building. So I think so many people are going in with that mentality that you're saying is like, oh, will you work with me? Will you list with me? Well, builders get that 600 times a day. But if you start with bringing people and you bring more people than their sales reps, they are going to want to work yeah. with you. And I think that's that's such a powerful angle. Now, you know, that leads perfectly into the content creation process, because I think a lot of people also overcomplicate getting the content right and and you know it's not like you've got this full multi-person team at all times since the beginning where you're spending thousands of dollars to do these property tours now you're at the point where you've got some of these million dollar listings and you you have a team and you're doing this unbelievable work but do you want to kind of take people back to getting started and what you did with you know the equipment that you used how you actually just kind of did it yourself and then the thing that I really love, how you got it up so quickly so that you were first. Yeah, yeah. So um, I knew that about myself. I, you know, I, I try to be pretty honest with myself to know like as a human or just as human myself, I know that if I complicate something or give myself too many hurdles to jump or barriers, I will essentially when push comes to shove, maybe give myself an excuse not to do something, you know? So the idea that I'm gonna have a DSLR, a body strap on me, you know, with a camera, with a stabilizer, and then I got to call upon a sound guy or call upon a guy to come help me. I'm like, all of that, like, I don't mind doing, but I also knew that that's, that's not something I can do immediately, you know? And ultimately it was video. A lot of it comes from inspiration and also comes from urgency, right? Inspiration from me, like waking up in the middle of the night going, oh my gosh, I just saw the perfect video of what people need based upon what I feel like I'm hearing from them, you know? And I, sometimes I just wake up and start writing ideas down. And also from the urgency, urgency meaning like if, it was really the best cross training I could have gotten to really expand and start real estate in the COVID market because it was so crazy. It was, it felt like black Friday all the time, but instead of flat screen TVs, we're talking about homes, right? So in so doing, it became almost like an arms race of who can capture the audience 
for specific opportunity, right? And so for example, let's say a community says, look, we're opening section number three. You guys have been waiting so long for section number three. It's now open. We released 15 lots. That at that time was no joke. Like if there's 15, I want to sell a third of them at least. You know what I mean? So yeah. the way I do that is I had to be first. I had to be the first one to film that Toll Brothers, keyword Toll Brothers for that community, for this area, maybe targeted or SEO towards people coming from the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast. And if I can do that first, YouTube can sometimes latch onto it just like they're fishing for something. They can grab onto it, they hook it in. And if it come up on Google searches and it'll come up on, you know, recommended videos following people watching other videos. And ultimately I knew that it was an arms race. And so I could not depend on an editor. I could mm -hmm. not depend on a staff or a team being there for me. I had to actually do this in one afternoon because I knew if I finally got the footage and I had to give it to someone to edit, it might take 72 hours, 48 hours, and that's totally okay. But in this market, I knew that urgency would be a competitive advantage. So I had to learn to do it myself. So part of doing it yourself when you're not an expert or a tech person or have any experience doing that, you got to keep it as simple as possible. So ultimately, it was just this iPhone. I think that one of the beautiful things about the iPhone is the advent of a wide angle lens. And the moment mm -hmm. they created a wide angle lens, it just became like it really kind of leveled the playing field and your ability to go out there and capture, you know, wider shots on video. And so, Mike, I used an iPhone. Didn't even use a gimbal. I used like a little a holder. Right. And I use a cord and mic. And again, that was purposely done. I know wireless is 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 efficient. It looks great. But again, I thought that there's going to be a time when it's not going to be on. Or there's yeah. going to be a time where the sound's going to puncture in and out. And I'm going to go out and give my heart into something. And I'm going to come home. And it's not going to be like the Bluetooth was off or whatnot. Right. So I had to give myself every reason that that won't happen. iPhone, a corded mic, and just a simple holder. And I thought, look, that's my repertoire. That's my arsenal. I can have that on me at all times. It fits in a small bag. It fits in my pockets, essentially. And that's what I did, Mike. Mike, there are times where I busted out of an appointment that didn't show up and I'm in some random area. I'm like, hey, as long as I'm here, I'm not going to waste it. I'm just going to go film yeah. this. And that's how I expanded like selling all of Austin. I ended up in different areas and I'm like, look, as long as I'm here, I'm going to film this. Right. And I did that. And people thought I represented the area. I started getting sales there. So um, I initially thought I'd just be a quote unquote North Austin real estate agent. And I just realized Austin's not big enough for that. Like I have no problem selling everywhere, you know, and so. Uh, minimal to me was best. Now I've expanded that for my listings, you know, but still my tours are all selfie and all self edited. Uh, my listings are done with another photographer and a videographer, but I do still edit things myself. 100% man, you know, simple scales. And I think it's, it's so powerful to just not give yourself every excuse because mm -hmm. Every other agent I see is trying to find every excuse as to why they can't do it. They don't have the equipment. They don't have the audio, all this type of stuff. And you took the complete opposite perspective. Now, one of the things that I love that you've done, and I think this has really separated you and your tours from other people, is how you start them. And I think it's really cool to see that, you know, you always start facing yourself. You've always started giving an intro or community uh, call that. Do you want to kind of talk about the sequence of how you did these tours, because I think that also really allowed people to connect with you, not just the home. I see all too many people going out, they just open the front door, do some panning shots, but they're not even in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, some of the training came for you, Mike. One of the things are something as simple as like, don't just put up a subscribe button, ask him to subscribe simultaneously. So I put a subscribe button on there, you know? And ultimately, that was my initial thought when I did his introduction. I'm like, well, I'm going to I want people to subscribe. So I should at least get on camera first and, and, and ask them to subscribe, you know, but then so doing, I got into rhythm, you know, and ultimately, just like any athlete, you know, they go through a couple like if they're going to shoot a free throw, they go through some motions. Right. And for me to get myself in state and filming this, be present with where I'm at, what I'm doing, because I've done so many of these sometimes, like I forget where I'm at. I just have to get myself in state and I got into a rhythm at the introduction. So when I start saying something like, Hey, this is Sumi Kim, your Austin real estate agent. Like the moment I start saying that it gets me in a rhythm. And once you start yeah. doing that enough, there's a rhythm to what you do. So I'm always saying, welcoming people, introducing who I am and say, Hey, look, I'm here in my home office right now. I'm here talking to Mike short, you know, like it just gets me in rhythm and it helps set things up it's like any Netflix show that you're going to, that, that you're going to binge watch, like you start to get in the rhythm of that introduction, you know, like mm -hmm. when you watch a game of Thrones, like done, 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 the music starts and it gets yeah. you in state, right? 
and it gets and it's almost like a commercial before the actual content in the movie so so i do introduce myself i want to do that all the time and also it's sending a message mike like when you're out there selfing yourself in a hundred degree weather maybe your skin is oily maybe you know it's sending a message to people saying look dude this guy's out there wearing a blazer like a hundred degree. Yeah. if he's willing to do that would he not do that for me if i procure him to like help me find a home would he not do that for me if he lists my home it's a message and there's something psychological that i've shared before but at the end of all of it i never just say hey thanks for watching i say look if you like what you see here i want you to know if you want it in so many words you got to come through me like i know i know the the vice president of this place i just had a great conversation with them and and i love to leverage that that relationship to help you you know it's almost like hey if you want to come to the club like find me like i got a back door yeah. you know i know the gm and so most people don't do that they just they just say, thanks for watching. And it's like, dude, you, you know, they're going to take your content and go find someone that they feel has some leverage and they're going to yeah. get your information and go use them and get, they're going to get the commission out of it. Right. So ultimately, if you watch what I do before I end the call, before I end the video, I'm always like, look, if you like what you see, come through me because of X, Y, and Z, you know, and it's psychological, it's small, but it's a difference between you getting paid and someone else getting paid. hundred percent, man. I think. You know, that's such a great segue into one of the most common questions that I get, which is how do I convert views into conversations? And what does that journey look like? Like for you, are people texting you, booking Zoom calls, emailing? What does that journey look like? Are you meeting them in person? So what is the average, and I know it varies, but on average, what does the customer journey look like from people that are consuming your content to then actually working with you. So email is is kind of my way of qualifying people. I'll definitely respond to confirm the criteria to which we discussed. If they respond from there and say, that's our criteria, Suman, that's awesome, you got it. Then I know it's a client I'm gonna move forward with. We're probably gonna sign a buyer rep or a listing agreement, whatever their, their needs are. Um, if they don't respond, then it's a great way for me to qualify it. I will say it was almost impossible, Mike, for me to single-handedly try to put everyone into a CRM, you know, and I was too new. I didn't understand the need for, let's say, an assistant that can do that for me. But um, ultimately, I qualify them through a, a separate contact, you know, um, through email, typically, and often text. Sometimes they'll call me, I'll let it go to voicemail and then get back to them. Um, but I did connect with people. I think ultimately, no matter how you do it, you're going to have to connect with people on the phone. You're going to have to have a conversation, especially on something as important and impactful as a home purchase or a home sale, you know, so. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I think one of the things that I would love to to ask you, because I, I think I know the answer, but I think it's going to be important for other people, because I talk about it a lot when I speak in, in public, which is how has YouTube helped you get new business on the resale side in terms of, you know, when you've got a listing presentation and you can go in and show the exposure that you've been able to get for other clients, how has that impacted your ability to win listings, get new clients and, and kind of be able to scale and, and show, not just tell what you do differently than other people. Sure. I think that, and, and I realize not everyone watching this is, is has a thousand subscribers on YouTube or thousands or whatnot. So I want to start speaking to those of you that are kind of starting off and say, look, just having a YouTube channel is a form of validation. Okay. Yeah. It's almost like, um, if I procure a, a plumber that wants to help me unclog my pipes and I'm like, I wonder if he's legit. And then I find that he's a website. It's not that like I found them on the website per se, I may have found them on Yelp, but it creates validation for the fact that man, these guys had other jobs before. Like I definitely trust them now. I was gonna call them anyways, but now I trust them for sure. So ultimately having a YouTube channel is a form of validation beyond how many subscribers you have. Now, when you start stacking subscribers and it starts hitting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, now you have an asset, you have an arsenal, okay? And so the best way I can help um, explain this is, Mike, I, till this day, don't own a listing presentation. I don't okay. have a listing presentation. I don't have a listing folder. I don't have a PowerPoint. Like when I see realtors like, hey, just got out of my listing appointment, like with their folder, I'm like, what's that thing in their hand? Is that a, what, is that a folder? You know, I have my phone, you know, and, and I sit there and, and sometimes I hope that they interviewed other, other realtors because I can look them in the face and say, look, I'm going to tell you right now that most realtors are going to do the same thing. They're going to give you professional photography, hopefully, professional, professional videography. They're going to add you on MLS and MLS, it's going to syndicate to Redfin, RealtorZillow.com, all that stuff. And they're probably going to host an open house for you on the weekend that might in this market give you maybe five to seven groups in a weekend. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to do all that as well. But on top of it, I'm going to give you an episode on my channel. And let me talk about ad analytics on my channel. I currently have almost 20,000 subscribers. I guarantee you when someone can get five to 10 people in an open house, I will get a virtual open house for you this weekend on top of a physical one. That virtual one will procure at least 500 to 1,000 walkthroughs and views that have been targeted to people that I believe is the right fit for this home. You know, game over, Mike. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, and guess what? You're going to pay me the same like you would have paid anyone else. You don't have to pay me more. Okay. I probably could take more. I could probably take a bigger percentage because of how big my reach is and what I'm going to do for you, but I'm not. And and this is why I want, I want you to work with me. And you know, it, it, it's been crazy. Like I came in here thinking I'm just going to work with buyers. I currently have $15 million in listings, you know, and, um, and it's, it, and it translated to that. But also once again, Mike, it's a message. It's a message that this guy's going to leave his house. He's going to get his shoes dirty for me. He's going to go and maybe pull some weeds in the backyard. He's going to, you know what I mean? Like it, 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 it's all a message when you put yourself out there. And especially when you start doing video content and have a channel. Um, and it gets to a point, Mike, where if you get enough notoriety and you get enough basis for people following you and watching you, they want to hire you to list their home just so they can see their home online. Yeah. Just so they can see it. You're going to give me an episode, Suman, because that becomes a keepsake now. You know, this is yeah. the home they raise their children in. They're going to sell it. They have so many memories in there. But we get to have this video forever, you know? And he's going to do a walkthrough of professional videography, maybe drone. And so is it worth it? I mean, everything in real estate or anything that you do in life is the question should be, is it worth it? Heck yes. In real estate, it happens to be a profession that when we execute, we get paid well, you know? So it's certainly worth it. And, um, and that's become an added benefit that I didn't foresee when I first started YouTube. Big time, man. I think, you know, one of the things that I'd really like to unpack is what you alluded to in terms of getting your shoes dirty and, and, you know, going that extra mile because you've got a work ethic like I've never seen before. You know, I'm seeing you upload videos at two in the morning, responding at 11 p.m., like early in the morning, like it doesn't matter, weekends. And I think a lot of people will look at that journey and just say, well, you know, it was easy or he was lucky and, and all of these things. But I would really like to pull this full circle by talking about maybe some mindset of like, best practices, mistakes, but what it actually took to get here, like the sacrifices that you made time with family, like what you've done in order to say, I'm committed to doing this. And now you've got that flexibility here and there to be able to enjoy more with your newborn things like that. But mm -hmm. what was the journey actually like from like a mindset, a mental perspective? What did you have to do to get to this point from starting from scratch? Uh, you know, there's a myth out there that says like, um, like you need work-life balance, you know, like work-life balance is that like, <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's, it's a thought. I get it's a thought, but it's not real. It's not real when it comes to pushing anything forward. That's like me saying, Hey, my car is stalled on the road. It's in neutral. The engine shut off. So we need balance to just give it a little bit of push here. No, you got to give it everything you possibly can give just to get that car moving. Now, eventually when it moves, it starts to gain some inertia, some momentum. You can actually jump in and eventually steer it, you know, cause it's going on its own now. But the beginning, there's no balance. You gotta give it everything you possibly can give. So I knew that going into it again, coming from a, a background where I, I, I was, you know, always doing a startup or something. So I knew that I'm like, I gotta give this everything I got. But on top of it, I was motivated by the fact that we're in a market where it's insane. It's crazy and I realized that. And I heard from every veteran of the game, every realtor that's been around for 10, 20 years, they assume this is an outlier. Okay, this is not normal. This is a unique period. These two years are really unique. And so ultimately, it's it's an agreement that you have to have. If you're married, you definitely want to have an agreement with your wife and just be like, look, this is the season that we're in. It, it We essentially have a farm and it's raining a lot. Crops are growing. We got to farm as much as we possibly can because there's going to be years and days where we're going to have droughts and we're going to wish we had done more in the time that we had the crops that we had. And so I knew that going into it. So the mindset was, I got to give it everything. And in fact, if I can give it everything, I can probably earn what I can earn in 10 years in one year, you know? Yeah. And so there's no such thing as work-life balance. You've got to give everything you possibly can get, give. Uh, and for me, um, I did exactly that, you know? I just gave it everything I got for the moment I woke up. I thought, when I didn't have any clients, I just woke up knowing that eventually they'll come. So I'm just going to get content, 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 content. In fact, sometimes there's days it's going to sound funny that I actually miss the times where I had nothing to do but to get content. 
because now I can't even get content because I'm so busy working with people that that need to be served. And so I'm like, there's so many ideas and things that I would love to do right now, but I just can't get. So the mindset is always, this is a specific season. It will not be like this forever, but darn it, when it's that time, you got to get it because if you don't, you're going to miss out, you know, and there's times and unique periods like this. And I feel like it might even come back again next year, you know, so it's something I can allude to later. But um, I knew that it's just not a this is a temporary thing. This is a unique time period. And I'm going to get as much as I can get, you know, and on top of that, I was motivated because I knew that if I can push myself forward in this period, it's going to build a foundation for me to have business for the next decade. And it's actually already happening. You know, I'm already listing homes that I help people sell. You know, unfortunately for some, you know, there's separations and people are going through, you know, separations of people I help, you know, as couples bring them in. Now they're going through that. So I'm helping them, you know, um, handle that season, you know, with the staying home as well. So it's starting to already make its journey in full circle. But mindset is ultimately, friends, stop trying to think there's some sort of a balance. Like I got to balance this and this. And I know what that's like. I have a family. I love my child. I love spending time with them. But and I do, you know, and the beauty of real estate in this profession is that I do have freedom of how I create my schedule. But you got to, it's even if you gave it your all, there's still a percentage that it might not work. So if that's the case, you have to go above and beyond and kind of give everything you could possibly get. So my first year, I never missed a training. If it was a training with my team, every Tuesday I was on it. Um, anytime I woke up, I had extra time and free time. I felt like I wasn't getting business or anything. I would get content. I'd get content ideas. I would do two to three tours a day, you know, and go out there and just get it done. I would drive to different areas where I felt like, hey, look, no one really, I don't see too many videos in this area. I know it's an hour and 15 minutes away, but what else am I going to do? You know, yeah. so went down there, did that. Uh, and it's funny because most of my listings today, it, it comes from an area that I don't even live close to. I'm like an hour and 20 minutes away from this area. I have like five or six different listings there. And it's because they saw videos that they, they probably thought I was like, a, I live there, you know? And, yeah. and that's some of the benefits of that. So mindset wise, I just know that if you can X, like everyone's got an idea, Mike, like we can sit there and I've had so many different ideas, but the chasm between an idea and execution is actually really great, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if you don't do anything, you're going to psych yourself out. You're going to psych yourself out for all the reasons why you can't, why you shouldn't, why you don't want to do video. But when you actually do it, it's actually a lot, a lot easier once you get a rhythm than you think, you know? And so mindset wise is that fact that when you forge anything forward it's an unusually amount of time that you have to you have to give to it just to get it up and going so i recommend that for sure 100 percent, man and i think you know i i really want to solidify what you just said about the the family balance and things like that because there's probably going to be some people that are listening and saying okay we'll assume in, you know you're saying this but like how does your wife actually feel and you know i don't even know if you know this but about a year ago i your wife sent me a dm on instagram just thanking me for you know every being able to pour into you and and oh, essentially wow. helping you know change the trajectory of your family's life and and she was over the moon despite yeah. the sacrifices that you've made and i think the fact that you made those sacrifices have gone on to give your family a better life so it's like do you want to take the short-term pain for the long-term opportunity where you're now, you know, developing a beautiful backyard and you're doing all these things for your family, taking them on trips. And, and they're so grateful for that, for that short-term pain. And I just think being able to see both sides of it. And at the end of the day, you know, which is what I might reply was, was you were the one that did all the work. I just gave a roadmap, but, but it's a testament to that agreement that the two of you guys had and being on the same page, being open and honest and saying, Hey, we're doing this. I'm all in. If you're all in with me, we're going to blow this stuff up. And that's exactly what you did. Yeah. So it, that's cool. That's cool to hear. I'm going to ask her about that, but, um, it is, man. I mean, look, at the end of the day, you can draw something out for a long period of time. I know for sure my future has freedom aligned to it, for sure. Yeah. Like when my kids feel like I'm working a lot, trust me, there's going to be a time where they're going to be sick of me because they're, they're going to see me all day at home, hanging out, going on trips. I don't think they'll get sick of me. But the point is, is that you got to strike the iron when it's hot, when there's opportunity, you know, and real estate is something that you cannot half ass. If you do, you, the mediocrity of it is actually you're going to get paid less than minimum wage, you know? But if you can push it forward um, and, and and you can and it does help to get the agreement of a partner of your spouse because because it it's an understanding it, you cannot I, I've seen this so many times, guys, and not just in real estate, but just in entrepreneurship and in independent opportunities, all of that. 
I've seen someone really try to get at it and they weren't given the support of their of, from their spouse and it almost self-sabotage the entire thing and psychologically it does and it's almost like your number one supporter should be coming from in-house you know and sometimes those become your greatest like detriment you know and so you, I I'm fortunate enough to get obviously on the same page you know with family and uh, even my children teaching them like they see this happening and my son is seven years old and he's like dude i'm not going to college you know, i'm going to sell houses with you yeah. and he does like home tours within our own house and and like just messing around you know and it's it, it's a message i'm giving to them it, it's certainly the life of an entrepreneur but um yeah it, it's important to get on the same page and, and understand what the goal is and what you're trying to do and i do also want to say look if you have a full-time job and you're getting into real estate keep that full-time job you know mm -hmm. and do what you can on the side i have teammates right now that are getting traction um, and he's about to quit his full-time job, but he didn't do it right away. You know, you don't want to, one thing that you'll understand in real estate, you don't want to come into a financially desperate because it'll show in everything that you do and it'll bleed into the energy of everything that, you know, that your fiduciary to your clients is, you're going to see all this compromise because you're so desperate to get that paycheck. So don't try not to come into it if you can't help it, not financially desperate. If you have a full-time job, try to keep it, get a paycheck, get your bills paid. And, but even more at that time, you got to pour every ounce of free time that you have into forging that for you cannot again if you do not push that car hard enough it's just never going to move but i trust me when it moves it'll move faster and easier for sure 100 percent, dude and i think that's the perfect way to pull this full circle in which is you know you not just surrounding yourself with you know the right family members that are going to support you but surrounding yourself with a community of other like-minded agents that are going to support you and also the fact that you've now been able to duplicate your success it's not like you're this anomaly that has only been able to get content or you know clients from your content you've now had a number of people partner with you and now they're building momentum following your blueprint similar to the relationship you and i have so do you want to kind of talk about you know, I know you touched on your decision to be able to partner with us at eXp, but what can people expect now when partnering with you? Because they get you and myself helping you scale their business. And I think as the market continues to get more difficult, you need to be surrounded by people that want to pour into you and people that are going to believe in you and people that are going to give you the roadmap, which is what you and I can provide. So do you want to talk about the incredible community that you've now created of content creators and what people can expect when partnering with the both of us? Yeah, I think that um, I think it's important to understand, like leaders are important for sure. But a number one follower is actually sometimes as effective, if not more effective. So I always tell people, look, Mike Sherrard is the architect. I took Social Agent Academy, a proprietary training that's available for our team. I took that and executed one training, which was a YouTube training, right? But what happened in the process is that I executed and then I nuanced it, which means I went through the trial and error, what worked and what didn't work. And and the architect doesn't really see that. They, they had the bigger picture, they put it out there and it takes me to go and execute this to feel like, okay, there's a couple other shortcuts within the the, the uh, this training that I've experienced myself. And so when someone partners with me, they're actually, <laughs> again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm saying, dude, you're getting the best of both worlds. You get the architect and the training to what you created, Mike, but I nuanced it. I trial and errored it. So what Mike did with the condensed efficiency in your time to ability to get production and results, I condensed it even more, you know, mm -hmm. through my experience for, for what I experienced having done that. And now someone gets to participate in that double concentration uh, of what that looks like from an architect to the number one follower or someone who's really executed on the training so that was important for me mike because i did ask myself again this is all new like i don't even like truth be told like my first year when i sold x amount of homes i didn't i'm is that a lot you know like people are like yeah. oh wow that's so much i can't believe it. i'm like i don't know if that's a lot i'm just doing what i can right now in hindsight three years back i realized yeah it, it's it's pretty un it's actually incredibly unusual to have that type of results but for me i had asked myself like did i get lucky is there something unique what happened and i can there's something to that timing is important execution all that stuff but it wasn't until i started seeing my agents from california from washington mm -hmm. for virginia from tennessee from chicago dc um massachusetts all over that are starting to build brands when they came in with none people in florida you know reps in florida that were you know find some mediocrity and all of a sudden you know they start implementing this branding this marketing this youtube they create a brands or luxury agents now 
and it's beautiful to see and it's a validation for me that yes suman you're not that special you know yeah. and, and and the truth is i'm not you know I, I i'm pretty simple when it comes to i'm just fundamentally i execute until i figure it out right and so it's been incredible to watch people that have chosen to partner with me i pour into them i nuance the training for them i make sure they go through the social agent academy to which we provide and for them to start getting results and start getting text messages says, suman it's been a year. I was getting like two leads a month for a year. Now I'm getting like five leads a week. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this is why ex the term exponential, you, you shouldn't downgrade that term. That term is, 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 is phenomenal. I just got a text from, you know, one of my teammates in Dallas. And she said, Suman, I got my first lead on YouTube. And I said, Natalie, listen, you're going to get a lead next year from the video you make today, you know? Yeah. So keep it going. Don't stop, right? Keep the catalog going keep keep building keep furnishing your home you know proverbial home here so um I, I right now my passion is to work with people to partner with people like truth be told i can do more good by helping many people give a, give away my nuggets to help many people that partner with me to be successful than it is for me to be quiet shut up and get it done myself right because that's what i did essentially for the first two years just got it done myself needed to prove to myself now i feel like i proved to myself now i felt like i have some form of documentation to which i've done now I, it's an opportunity for me to go out there because I am very much still new, you know? And so when I come across agents that are either at a standstill, um, unable to break into more of a modern marketing strategy or brand new and licensed, I have an empathy for them to be like, man, like I need you to hear this because what I learned in the trajectory to which I was given, it's a gift. I need to pass this along, you know? And I don't see it in industry. It's, 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 it's nothing against the people that own brokerages and offices today, but they all became successful in a different era. Eras mm -hmm. change. We live in a different era today, you know? And now those people that became successful in different eras have great businesses due to referrals, okay? But ultimately, new people don't have that benefit, but it's these people that became successful in a different era that are teaching these things to everyone. And you ask yourself why people have such a high failure rate, why brokerages are having retention issues and losing so many people, because they're starting to think to themselves, gosh, there's got to be other ways to do this and not just these ways that everyone is saying the same thing. And you and me are susceptible to this, Mike, but we don't know what we don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in this industry, many people that run the bigger decisions that have that oversee the livelihood of many agents know that what they don't know what they don't know. And they don't know this game on a modern strategy and an efficient way to which you do. And so I'm grateful and it's up to me to not save. I mean, I'm just up to me to share um, people that are willing and there's nothing more powerful than someone that is willing to learn, you know? And I respect, especially agents that have history that have been in this game much longer than I have that reach out to me and say, Suman, I have my limits. I need to know the next level. I'm like, that's very powerful. Experience plus your willingness to learn is an unbeatable combination. When you're new, you got to learn anyways, but those that are experienced. And so um, I welcome it right now. Um, I just want to give a disclaimer to say like, I get about two to five phone calls a day. I truly want to sit there and help all of you and pour my heart out like I did, but I, it's it's been really challenging for me. And I really have to limit myself to those that actually commit to, to working with me personally. 100% man. I think, you know, to, to, to wrap that up, it's, it's been incredible to see how much of a leader you are in terms of leading by example. You know, I see all of the the videos of you going out and taking your, you know, your crew, not just in your local market, but different markets for dinners and experiences. And, you know, even though we're at a cloud-based brokerage, you've been able to create that intimacy, that culture and the collaborative community that so many people struggle with. And you've done that, but as you talked about being able to help people thrive versus survive during the times going forward, it's not going to get any easier. And the fact that you're still doing this at the highest level, in order for you to continue to do that at the highest level, you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on. And for people to be able to have your support, your blueprint and roadmap, and also have your intel on how things are going and where it's going, people are doing a complete disservice to their business themselves and their families by not exploring what it's like to be able to partner with you. So brother, again, thank you so much for coming on and for sharing your wealth of wisdom. And, and again, I couldn't be more proud of, of what you've been able to do over the last few years. And I know that it's only just getting started. Heck yeah, Mike. Um, I, I have so much gratitude for you and, uh, we're just getting, we are just getting started, you know, and I will, I will tell all the agents out there, um, Look, it's a unique year. You know, we're heading into quarter four. It's a unique year. There's an election this year here in the States. 
And ultimately that's paused a lot of stuff, but if rates somehow um, pivot or change next year, we might see a repeat of what we felt, you know, in 2021, 22. At that point, I'm telling you right now, I just wanna like, just a, a plea to you guys that you have to dig the well before you're thirsty. It cannot mm -hmm. be that season and you're like, oh, now I'm gonna do this and that. It's like, no, this is actually the time to do it. When it's stalled, it's slowed down a bit. We're gonna create a net. You wanna create a net so when the fish actually do come, you're catching that. And I don't see people doing that. I see people just reacting, you know, and waiting for something to happen. So um, I'm here, Mike. Uh, I do wanna let you know and let everyone know, like, yeah, if, if there are agents out there that want that kind of personal connection, that uh, locking arms, like I'm here, I'm here for it, man. I love it, man. Well, guys, again, yeah. I've linked all of Suman's incredible information below his YouTube channel, Instagram, and also his calendar link if you want to book that private call with him. So thanks so much for tuning in. As always, guys, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, go take action, dig that well, and we'll see you in the next video.